Congratulations, your loan is conditionally approved. A SunWest loan originator is always on top of her approvals, no matter where she is. Break free with Morgan. Welcome to The Interest, I'm Christine Stewart. Given the crisis level lack of inventory in the housing market, you could say this was inevitable. There are fewer homes for sale than at any time in the past 11 years. Redfin says that the number of homes for sale in May fell 7.1% year over year to a seasonally adjusted 1.4 million, the lowest level in its records, which date back to 2012. It was also the first year over year decline in listings since April of 2022. By comparison, there were 2.2 million homes for sale in May 2019, before the COVID-19 pandemic, meaning May's housing supply was more than 38.6% below pre-pandemic levels. Realtor.com says that while prices have eased slightly, higher mortgage rates are hurting affordability and many of those who already own a home are not incentivized to list. As a result, the total number of homes for sale is projected to be down 15.8%, which is likely to be at its lowest point since 2012. Realtor.com chief economist Daniel Hale says that high inflation and the Fed's actions to curb it have had a significant impact on the housing market this year. And while inflation has begun to ease, the sustained spike in mortgage rates was enough to stifle the housing market after several years of low rates and strong activity. The housing market has really seen a double whammy in 2023, with re-entrenchment in the number of homes for sale, coupled with the still high prices and mortgage rates that have kept both first-time and repeat buyers on the sidelines. As Fed Chairman Jerome Powell reiterated yesterday to Congress, increases are likely necessary, even though last week it paused its string of rate hikes. Coming up, technology is great, but there are still many people who need that personal touch. People talking, but they just don't know. It's in my heart why I love you so. I love you, baby, like a mine of gold. Come on, sugar, let the good times roll. Join us in New Orleans July 11th for Ultimate Mortgage Expo at Hotel Monteleone. Make connections with the best in the industry that will elevate your career to new levels. A lot of people live in make-believe. They keep a lot going up their sleeve. But baby, my love ain't the kind that folds. Come on, sugar, let the good times roll. Ultimate Mortgage Expo, the Gulf Coast's ultimate gathering for mortgage professionals. Go to nmplink.com slash ultimate and register today for free with promo code NMPFREE. Welcome back. While there seems to be an app for everything these days, it's not always the best way to do business. Our own Sarah Wollock catches up with this surprising new trend. At this point, I think about 40% of um, U.S. mortgage loans are originated by small to mid-sized lenders. Even though technology is the way of the future, not everybody wants to get their mortgage through an app. And a study done by Maxwell found that Hispanic borrowers in particular were more apt to choose a small in-person lender to do business with. And one of the key aspects of, um, uh, of uh, when you're going through a mortgage process is, is the ability to or the desire to, to find somebody trustworthy, somebody to help you navigate and coach you through the transaction. And what Dave noticed is that minority borrowers especially are expressing a need for a coach while making the largest purchase of their lives. Close to 50 percent of, of um, uh, Hispanic borrowers who considered abandoning the process I said that they did so uh, or, or considered so because the lender didn't provide enough support. It's also unfair to generalize the whole U.S. housing market. Dave says that one borrower's experience isn't like another. It's a lot of sort of empathy and, and understanding of, uh, of what you need to, to know and how you need to uh, navigate the process. Maxwell is a tech solutions company, so they know that online mortgages are important. 
but they also know that their customers are using their tools so that they can be face to face with their borrowers. We always looked at uh, how can we how can we leverage technology, how can we insert that into the process so that uh, uh, people can focus on on what matters more, which is understanding the borrower, their financial situation. What can we tweak? What can we change? How do we get you through the process? You can read more about the need for face-to-face -face mortgages in the June edition of Mortgage Banker Magazine, available now at mortgagebankermag.com. For The Interest, I'm Sarah Wolak. Thanks, Sarah. For more on these and all of today's top stories, go to nationalmortgageprofessional.com.